<laughs> okay, so now I will shifty the previous construction and I will discuss Dolbo modules. So the goal is to shifty this period ring C. So let's start with X, a smooth S scheme. But it's no longer affine. So now I need to uh, also consider a deformation like in the previous case, except that it's now a serious condition. So assume that there exists a smooth A2 OK bar deformation. I will call X tilde of X where I extend scalars to OC. So it's X. OK bar OK OC over spec OC over A2 the bar and I assume that it exists and fix it. All our constructions will depend on this deformation. I remind you that we have our ring B bar and that this ring is in fact a collection of finite et al rings, B bar U. So I, for an integer n, I will denote by B bar n the reduction of B bar modulo P to the n B bar. And for every U, I will denote by B bar U n, B bar U modulo P to the n B bar U. So we start now <coughs> for a small, a fine, uh, et al scheme u over x, small in the sense of faultings, we can shifify the Higgs state uh, ring I introduced, algebra I introduced pre previously, and the Higgs state extension. There exists a canonical uh, exact sequence of b bar u n modules of u eta bar fet, which means representation of the fundamental group. I call it f u n, which is an extension of xi minus 1 omega 1 x over s of u I extend scalars to b bar u n by b bar u n. whose stalk is nothing but just the reduction mod Pn of the Higgs state extension I defined previously, such that for any geometric point Y bar of U eta bar, the stalk of Un, Fun at Y bar is canonically isomorphic to the Higgs state algebra I defined previously, modulo p to the n, okay, where this Higgs state algebra, this is, is the Higgs state algebra, which means the extension I just defined before, uh, uh, sorry, the Higgs state extension, not the algebra, defined relatively to the uh, uh, deformation relatively to the restriction of the deformation x tilde over u. Restriction of x tilde over u. Okay, so I need a deformation of u in some sense to define this Higgs state algebra. I have a global deformation. I use it over u. I get a Higgs state extension and its reductions modulo p to the n can be shifified in a really a very uh, canonical way. So I get just to shift in the finite et al uh, topos. So there is nothing mysterious here. In fact, I need now to introduce this weak the completion. So the way to work with it in Falting's topos is to work with a collection of sheaves. So for every R, a rational number, I will define F U N R. So this is, will be an extension of the same thing. Answer over x of u b bar u n 
by b bar u n and this is just the pullback pullback of the previous extension of f u n by multiplication by p to the r on this term okay so you take multiplication by p to the r here and you pull back the extension so you get a collection of extensions like this and from this extension we can form an algebra like the previous like we did previously so this is, is an inductive limit of sim m b bar u n of f r u n Okay, so this now is a B bar U N algebra of the finite et al. purpose of U et bar. So this construction is in fact functorial in U. So I can cons consider the collection of these extensions and uh, Algebras, so I can cons consider the collection, so it's functorial. So I can consider F U N R and U C U N C U N R. So now these are in fact pre sheaves, pre sheaves not on E. But on a subcategory of E, I will call E small. This is a full subcategory of E. So this is, is the full subcategory category of objects V maps to U such that U is small affine. Okay, because I defined, in fact, this torso only on small affine. Okay, but this is not really a serious problem because this subcategory is topologically generating for the vanishing topology. So if I take the associated sheaf, I will get a sheaf on faulting stoppers. So this is, is my sheaf Fn R. So this is now became a B bar N module of E tilde. And my shift C and R, which is now a B bar N algebra of E tilde. In some sense, these are the main actors for us. Okay. But, so, in some sense, with the, working with all these uh, algebras together, with different R's, I will take in account the, the weak periodic completion. But I would like also to take in account the periodic topology. And for this, I need to introduce the formal completion. Yes. Yes. Why do we have this? Ah, because in fact you need the Frobenius of R bar modulo P R bar to be surject. Okay, so this is the kind of things. Okay, maybe you can enlarge a little bit more, but uh, in order to have a surge theta is surjective when the absolute Frobenius of A mod P I is surjective, and this is in fact is a consequence of uh, the almost purity in general. So as soon as you know that that's a surjective, you can do the same construction. So you can you can okay okay. So, I will now define the formal periodic completion of faulting the ring topos. And this is, in fact, an analog, analog, analog of, let's say, curly X, the formal scheme, which is the formal completion, the formal periodic completion. of the scheme x bar, which is x where we extend scalar from s to s bar. Okay, so how I define it? <clears throat> 
So first of all, I need to define the special fiber of the felt ink stoppers. of E tilde. So this is, is in fact a topos I will denote by E tilde S. So first I describe it and then I will say a few words about it, which fits into, so it's called E tilde S, uh, which uh, fits in a commutative, commutative diagram like this. So first of all, it's a subtopos, I will say what it means of E tilde. And here we have the projection to the etal topos of X. The special fiber is above the special fiber of X. So this is, is just uh, the canonical injection and the morphism uh, sigma induced morphism sigma S. So in fact, I have to tell you what is this topos. You don't need to know exactly the definition in order to follow what I will say later. But let me just for the experts, just say what is this closed subtopos of E tilde. So, <clears throat> concretely, in fact, E tilde S is the full subcategory of E tilde of sheaves F such that restriction over the pullback of the generic fiber is the final object. of uh, E tilde restricted over sigma upper star of X E, X, sorry, E, okay? And the morphism delta is defined by the fact that delta lower star is the canonical injection. Okay, so as I said, you don't really need to, 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 to know exactly the definition. It's just a subcategory of E tilde. And what is important is that it has some nice sheaves inside it. For every n bigger than zero, the sheaf B bar n is an object of E tilde S. Okay. In some sense, we could work in E tilde, but it will make things really very complicated. So the natural thing to do is to work over E tilde S. So I will not insist too much on E tilde S. Okay, so now the morphism sigma s can be uh, enriched to a morphism of ring topos e tilde s ringed by b bar n, which I said was in fact an object there, so it's a ring there, and it maps to the special fiber ringed with the ring O x bar n. So let me remind you that x bar n was the reduction mod p to the n of x bar, which is the base change of x to s bar. And I remind you that I took k, the residue field of k to be algebraically closed. So this is, means that I have an equivalence between these two topos. And this implies that I have this equivalence. So this ring, I can see it really here. OK. okay. So using this, I can now globalize the extensions I have for it for every u previously, which is our affine small. So I get that for any r, there exists a canonical exact sequence of b bar n modules. I call it, so this is just my Higgs state extension. It's an extension of the pullback by sigma n of psi minus one omega one x bar n over s bar n by b bar n. Okay, so the our extensions really put together give this nice uh, extension. And moreover, my ring C R n is in fact uh, let's say since I define it differently, it's canonically isomorphic or could have defined it like this, to just the, the same construction, which means the inductive limit on symmetric powers of FRN. Okay. So now this is the special fiber. 
and what will be the the formal completion the formal completion here the completion of this faulting topos is in fact the following topos ring topos first of all i take the special fiber i take projective systems and then I ring it by a ring B bar brevi. So let me explain what this. So this is just the category of projective systems of objects of E tilde S indexed by N. Okay, it's a topos. Okay, and what is the ring B bar brevi? So this is just the projective system of the rings B bar modulo P to the N. Okay, so this is, is really my main, uh, so this is where the faulting extension will take place. So the collection of morphisms sigma n fit together and induce a morphism of topos from this periodic completion to the formal scheme, uh, which is just, which means x s czar with the ring O x, which is the periodic completion of O x bar. Okay, so these are the morphisms induced by sigma, induced by the sigma n's. Okay? So, I, so this is taking account the periodic topology and it remains to invert P. And as usual, we will work modulo isogenies. So I will introduce now the first. Yes. The goal is to construct the correspondence. We will construct the correspondence. So I introduce, I introduce up to now a topos, and I introduce a ring, okay, C, the Cn and this Bn. So, and on this topos, we will construct a correspondence à la fontaine using the admissibility with this ring, okay? So it will become very, very clear soon, okay? Between modules on this ring, and Higgs bundle on this one. Okay, so this is why I need to introduce the object. So you just wait uh, maybe five or 10 minutes and you will get it. Maybe, <laughs> if you survive. Okay, so I will introduce now, I consider now uh, the category uh, of B bar brevi modules up to isogenies. So this is, is the category of B bar brevi modules up to isogenies. What does it mean? So, so this is just the category having the same object, so same objects as the category of B bar modules. And for morphisms, if you have two B bar, uh, two B bar modules, so homomorphism in this category, are just homomorphisms of B bar brevi modules where I extend scalars over Z to Q. Okay, so this is, will be our main category in some sense. So, and this in fact is an analog of the category of R bar at one over P representations of pi one. Okay, so this is, is the analog of these categories, the globalization of this category. So I will give a name to the uh, localization factor. So mod u b bar. So if I have a module, I will denote its image by f q. So I have the, the in particular the ring b bar q, and the objects there are called b bar q modules. Okay. So we have now in these categories. Two interesting objects. First of all, we have the Higgs state extension put together. I will call them F brevi. So this is just the collection of the FRN. So this is, is a B bar brevi module. Okay. And I have the rings C brevi R 
CR N. So this is now is a B bar Bravi algebra. Okay. So here I have really done just from the first construction I did last in the pre, in the first time, first lecture. I just shifified, then I put all together modulo the different p to the n, and then I describe them in a beautiful way, just like this. So why it's beautiful? Because now, for instance, we have a canonical exact sequence. So this fr is in fact a canonically an extension of omega 1 x over s by b bar brevi. So here x is the formal completion of x bar and s is just the formal spectrum of s, of oc. And moreover, if I look at this uh, ring, uh, this is, is a b bar algebra. So the b bar Brevi universal derivation, the universal, so the universal B bar derivation of C Brevi R, I will write D C Brevi R, can be identified with a map from C Brevi R to the pullback of omega 1 x over S times over B bar Brevi of C Brevi R. So it can, the differential module is really a pullback from something coming from the uh, formal scheme. And moreover, this derivation is in fact a Higgs field. So this is not complicated to see, which means it satisfies the integrability condition I gave. So we have already now our Higgs structure. Okay? And this is, will be our canonical Higgs uh, field in some sense. So we have the two structures we need, Galois representations and Higgs bundles, and we will put them together. Because this has differentials which are zero. So in fact, these are differentials of, so, the, so if you take uh, something here, you can see it here, and its differential is just the image. So anything here is a differential of something. So then the Leibniz will, be, uh, will give you uh, uh, the Higgs field. Okay, as I said, we need to work with all these objects together. So if I have R bigger than R prime bigger than zero, I have a, a canonical morphism from C brevi R to C brevi R prime, okay? And uh, moreover, if I look at P R prime D, the universal derivation here, its restriction to C R is exactly P R D C R by my constructions. So the natural thing is not the universal derivation, but PR times the, the universal derivation. Okay, so this is imply, um, induce a morphism that I will denote like this, between Higgs, uh, between Dolbo complexes. Okay, so uh, is it, yes. So this is, is in fact, the Dolbo complex of C brevi R, P R D C brevi R. And the same thing here. Because of this property, I have a natural morphism here. So now I can state the main cohomological properties of these algebras, which lead to the Simpson correspondence. So we have two properties. First, their Galois cohomology, and second, their, in some sense, Dolbo cohomology. So the Galois cohomology first. So the canonical morphism, so the canonical homomorphism, which goes from Ox 1 over P to the inductive limit for R bigger, strictly bigger than zero, of sigma lower star of C brevi R, where your inverse P is an isomorphism. And for any Q bigger than one, the higher direct image, you take the limit vanishes.
Okay? So this is in fact a shiftification. So this result is in fact a shiftification of the Galois cohomology, of the computation of the Galois cohomology of the period ring C I described uh, in the first uh, lecture over small affine. Okay? From the computation which is done uh, using uh, almost purity of faultings, you, you get this result. So you have to go from the result over QP to have to find the result modulo P to the end up to some um, bounded uh, torsion. And from that, you can get this result by going to the limit. Okay. So this counterpart, which is the Higgs uh, side, we have also, we can also compute the Dolbo cohomology. So for instance, this is also explain why you have to take weak P, uh, complete, uh, periodic completion. So if I don't take this limit, I don't get this, okay? So to get really the correspondence, this is, is responsible for the correspondence, for the periodic Simpson correspondence. I need no higher cohomology and I need exactly this, okay? And to get this, I have to take this limit, okay? So this is, is why I need this weak periodic completion. Okay, now the counterpart is from the other side. It says also the same thing, that the canonical morphism, now in the category of uh, modules up to isogenies, of, uh, because it takes place up, which goes from B bar Q to uh, the limit of H naught of uh, this Dolbo complex, but where I take its class modulo isogenies. R. So this one is an isomorphism. And for any Q bigger than one, uh, the limit for R bigger than zero of HQ of the Dolbo complex vanish. Okay? So, this is, is a shiftification of the computation of uh, the Durham cohomology of the algebra CR. In fact, observe that this category of B bar modules up to isogeny does not admit uh, necessarily uh, filtered inductive limits. So it's here you have really to prove that this is the limit, but there is a priori the limits are not representable in this category. It's more convenient to uh, enlarge the category. So to embed this category mod modulo B bar brevi module up to isogeny to embed it in a larger category, which is the category of end B bar modules and B bar brevi modules. So this is, is the category of uh, and B bar brevi modules. It's, this category has, uh, so uh, small filtered inductive limits are representable here, and it has nice cohomological properties. And it's really much easier to work here than here, okay? Good. In the same way, we would like to have something symmetric. If you take the category of coherent modules over OX one over P, you can embed it in the category of and uh, OX modules. Okay? But you need it to be coherent here to, to do. Okay, and the morphism sigma upper uh, sigma hat will induce adjoint functors that extend the natural adjoint functors between end modules, B bar brevi, and end modules over OX, which are direct image and pullback. Okay, so they extend the natural uh, morphisms. So now I can define the correspondence between B bar brevi modules or and B bar brevi modules and Higgs bundles. So definition. So we consider first of all M a B bar brevi, so an and B bar brevi module. Okay. 
and b bar brevi module and i consider n uh, higgs o x 1 over p uh, bundle on x over s what does it mean so let me say exactly what it means so i mean a locally projective o x 1 over p module on uh, x s which is uh, uh, equipped with a Higgs field, which means a morphism theta from n to n tensor over OX, uh, om psi minus 1, omega 1, x over s. So this is OX linear and satisfy the, the integrability condition theta, which theta equals zero. I ask here that it's locally projective, not locally free, because the stalk of this algebra are not uh, local in general. Okay, so we will say that these two objects are associated. So we say that M and N are, are associated for a rational number r, which is strictly bigger than zero, if there exists an isomorphism from what? Uh, an isomorphism of and C brevi r modules from, first of all, n, where we extend scalars to CR, and the other side, I take the pullback of n. And I extend scalars to CR. Okay? And moreover, I will complete just down. So this is, is an isomorphism of and CR modules. I want this isomorphism to be compatible with Higgs fields. Compatible with total Higgs fields. With total. Higgs. So here on M, I put the Higgs field zero. On CR, I put PR times its universal derivation. And on N, I just put the pullback of theta. So this is, should tell you now exactly what we did, what we are doing. So we would like to put in correspondence B bar brevi modules, or and B bar brevi modules, if you want and Higgs field, which means things over x, over x, the formal scheme. So we pull back the thing from x to the faulting stoppers, and we ask that we have an admissibility condition with this period ring. So in some sense, it's really the usual Fontaine correspondence. We have two structures. We have the C, let's say, the B bar module structure, which means the Galois representation, and we have the Higgs field, and the main object for us will be PR times uh, the universal derivation of CR. So this is, is really, the, sc the scheme is very uh, simple in some sense. Okay, so we will, we will say that, so we say that they are, we say that M and N are associated, and are associated, if they are, are associated. If they are, are associated for a certain R. For a certain R, which is strictly bigger than zero. And this is taking account the weak periodic completion. Okay. So now I can introduce the terminology. So I can say what so definition. So we say that. Uh, an end B bar brevi module is Dolbo if it's associated associated to a Higgs bundle 
on uh, OX1 over P. Okay, I know X1 over P, Higgs bundle on X over S. And we say, the other side, that, uh, let's say, I know X1 over P, Higgs bundle on X over S is solvable if it is associated to an end B bar brevi module. Okay. So these are our admissibility conditions. And uh, so let me observe first that uh, since I embedded the category of and uh, of B bar brevi module up to isogeny in the category of and B bar brevi modules, this notion applies also to B bar brevi um, Q modules. Okay, I can speak of being uh, Dolbo. Okay, and in fact, in the first book with uh, Michel and Takeshi, uh, so our part, we work just with this category. We did not enlarge to uh, and B bar brevi modules, but for cohomological consideration, it's much better to work with and B bar brevi modules. Okay, now I can state the theorem, the first theorem. In fact, there exists an equivalence of category. Alors, there exists an explicit, there exists explicit uh, equivalences of categories of categories quasi inverse to each other to each other. So from and B bar brevi modules, which are Dolbo, to Higgs bundles, which are solvable, so always over the ring OX1 over P, and the coefficients are omega, omega 1X over S twisted by Xi minus 1. So this one I call it H, this one I call it V. Okay? So these admissible objects are in fact in correspondence, one-to-one -one correspondence, and it's very explicit. So to, to show you that they are very explicit, let me describe, for instance, H. So I have the category of end modules over B bar brevi. I can send it to the category of end modules over OX by just sigma, lower star. So I can take from the category of end modules, I can go to the category of modules by taking inductive limits. So this is this is the functor which is just defined by being by commuting with filtered inductive limits. So the kappa of O X of Lim alpha is just the inductive limit of alpha, okay? Because the inductive limit exists in the category of OX modules. So I need to give a name to this functor. I will call this functor, it's, it's, a, it's a just a small variation on the other functor, so I will just change the, the, the hat into a, a vector. Then, in fact, the functor H is defined for any and B bar brevi module, not just for the admissible. I can define the functor H of M as the inductive limit over R in Q strictly bigger than zero of the direct image in this sense of M, where I extend scalars B bar brevi to C brevi R, and I equip it with uh, the Higgs field, which is just induced by PR times the universal derivation of CR. It's very concrete. I just enlarge scalar to CR, take the direct image. 
and take the Higgs field induced by the universal derivation. I have all the time to work with limits on R because the cohomology vanish only when I go to this limit. Okay. So I can now then state the second theorem, which will answer the will show the, that the property we I introduced in the introduction is now satisfied. So theorem. So for any Dolbo, for any Dolbo, and B bar brevi module uh, M, okay, and any integer Q bigger than zero. Uh, uh, okay, so I don't need an integer since I will give a statement in the derived category. Okay, there exists uh, a canonical functorial isomorphism in the derived category of modules of the formal scheme, OX, between the direct image, the higher direct image of M by this functor sigma arrow and the Dolbo complex of the Higgs bundle associated to M. So this is, is the Dolbo complex. Okay? So we really achieved what we wanted in the beginning. We wanted, in some sense, an equivalence between uh, B bar B between B bar module, let's say, and Higgs bundles. And we wanted that by direct image by sigma, the direct image of the B bar brevi module is the complex, is the Higgs bundle of the associated Higgs field. Okay, or the associated Higgs bundle. So this is maybe look a little bit abstract, but let's see a concrete corollary of this. So now, for instance, if you take uh, If you take, so if we take now corollary, if you take now M to be a local system, so ZP local system, this ZP brevi local system, on X eta bar et al, which means a projective system, of Z mod P N uh, uh, local systems. And if I denote by M, just I push it forward by Psi to faulting stoppers, and then I extend the scalars to the ring B bar brevi, okay? This is just the natural extension to projective system of the morphism Psi. Then if I assume that X is proper, X over S is proper. And uh, this module N, where I uh, uh, take up to isogeny, is a Dolbo B bar brevi Q module. Okay. Then there exists uh, a canonical spectral sequence. which is an E2 spectral sequence, Ij, equal Hi, Xs, Hj, so this is Zariski in some sense, uh, of the Dolbo complex, I will say which Dolbo complex, converging to Hi plus J of X eta bar, of the local system where I extend scalars over Zp to C. So here this k dot, let me write it here, is the Dolbo complex of the associated Higgs bundle. K dot is the Dolbo complex complex of H of MQ, okay? So I take a local system, 
I assume it's Dolbo. It's admissible. I take the associated Higgs bundle. I form the Dolbo complex, and I say I have a spectral sequence whose initial term is this, in some sense, quasi coherent, uh, this coherent cohomology, and its abutment is the extension of scalars of the etal cohomology. So, this is in fact a generalization of Hodge of Hodge spectral sequence. And in fact, if you take just M to be the constant shift Zp, then in this case, we can, we, 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 we can prove that uh, the Higgs bundle associated to BQ is just Ox1 over P plus the zero Higgs field. Okay? And this spectral sequence is just this spectral sequence. In this case, is exactly equal to the hot state spectral sequence. So this is really a generalization of the hot state spectral sequence. Okay, so this is uh, the story about the absolute, in some sense, construction. Yes? Yes? So you put the Yes, yes. Yeah, but in some sense, yeah. So in some sense, want I wanted to write spectral sequence okay. to remind you the hot state. This is, is, is much more, it's, it's a little bit more. Okay. And, and uh, we will see uh, also in the second part that we have the relative version of this, which is also more, OK? But I wanted to just come back to hot state, OK? Is it OK? Yes. But, uh, if you start with the finger Exactly. Exact, exact. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. But in some sense, anyway, we have the, the Tate cohomology results which says that spectral sequence is nothing because it degenerates and split. I don't, I don't think we get more, <laughs> anything. Okay. Okay, so I will, uh, in the remaining time, so I have 10 minutes, I will start to discuss now the functoriality by proper direct image. By proper direct image. And I will start, in fact, by uh, stating the relative version of Falting's uh, Main comparison theorem. So let me consider first a morphism. G from X prime to X. So this is a smooth morphism of smooth S schemes. Okay? So I can associate to X prime also a faulting stop us, call it E prime. And the construction is in fact functorial. So I have a natural morphism of uh, topos from E prime tilde to E tilde. So faulting topos up come also, comes also with natural morphism sigma prime and psi prime. Okay. And this one is G at the bar. And these diagram, all these constructions are functorial, so these diagrams are committed. Moreover, we have rings up, which I called B bar. I put a prime. I have a ring down, which I call B bar. And the construction is really functorial also in the, for these rings. So I have a natural homomorphism from uh, theta lower star of B bar prime from B bar to uh, the direct image of B bar prime. Okay. Then I can state Falting's relative main comparison theorem. It says the following. So it was in fact stated and the proof sketch by Falting's and we gave a complete proof in our 
book on hot state local uh, on hot state spectral sequences. So assume the morphism G from X prime to X to be projective. And let F prime be a locally constant constructible sheaf of Z mod P and Z modules on X eta bar eta. Then for any uh, I bigger than zero, there exists a canonical morphism. of psi lower star. So, so there will be an isomorphism turning around this diagram. So first of all, I have a sheaf here. I can push it directly, higher direct image here, and then push it here and extend scalars to B. Or I can push it here, extend scalars to B prime, and take higher direct images here. So it's psi lower star of R i g eta bar lower star of F and then I extend scalars to B bar, or I can first push it forward by Psi prime, F prime, then push it for extend scalars to B bar prime, and then take direct, higher direct image by theta. So, there is a natural map like this, and this uh, canonical morphism is an almost isomorphism. Okay, so this statement was, in fact, uh, as I said, formulated by Faltings in his uh, asterisk article, and he sketched in the appendix of the article a proof. So we worked the details. It turns out that there is a little bit, uh, there is even more serious work to be done. And uh, our proof with Michel relies on uh, a theorem, a local structure of almost et al. phi modules. Okay? So the statement in itself, I think, is interesting. Anyway, it leads to this result. So uh, let me mention here that, in fact, this sheaf R, uh, Ri G lower star of F prime is locally constant constructible by the proper and smooth base change theorem. So it's exactly in the range where psi is locally acyclic. This is the first remark. The second remark is about projectivity. So in fact, we need this projectivity condition to prove uh, almost finiteness uh, statement for almost coherent modules. And we rely for this on SGA6 instead of using Kihel. So it should be possible to replace projectivity by properness, but Okay, we have done it only for projectivity. Okay, so uh, I think I, it's better that I stop here and uh, I will continue next time for uh, the functoriality of the Simpson correspondence. So are there any questions or comments? Yeah, so you define this Higgs field to be solvable if it's associated to be a, to a B bar B over modular. Yeah. So is there a way to describe this property without using that? Without using what? Without using B bar B over. Like if I gave you a Higgs field, is there some way to tell that the thing can be associated? Oh, from just the Higgs field? Right. Uh, it's a little bit complicated in some sense. Uh, so I don't know what, what you have in mind. But, uh, okay, so uh, at the end of the story, when the Higgs, the periodic Simpson correspondence will be uh, constructed, let's say for curves, mm -hmm. not just for admissible, but we extend it by descent, we expect what should be the image of the functor, okay, which take a this B, the B bar rep, uh, modules are what we call generalized representations. Okay? So what is the image of this functor? We expect to be semi-stable Higgs bundles with, uh, van with uh, uh, vanishing slopes. Okay? Okay. But this is, first of all, after we extend to all representation, not just uh, small or admissible, 
And uh, this is very conjectural. So Dajin will discuss some aspect related to this uh, statement, uh -huh. but uh, it's not clear at all. Uh, concrete. It means if you give me one, I may be a little bit clever to find an associated B bar bundle, but I have no, uh, no conjecture about the shape of what, what they should be. Okay. Uh, so this is one statement. Another thing is that in some sense, uh, if we are in the affine case, okay, so we know that this admissibility correspond exactly to smallness of funding, smallest condition, and then it became very concrete. Okay, in the affine case, it's extremely concrete. So we have a correspondence between small Higgs bundles and small representation. So this is also another. But in the global case like this, so uh, if locally it's small, you may maybe glue it and get something. But, uh, Thank you. Very, uh, a very naive question. Uh, in the first part, for quite a time, you work with an uh, affine X and a, a fixed lifting. You wrote fixed lifting. And suddenly at the end, the X uh, became proper. So, uh, how at the end know? here, it's for Falting's main comparison yeah, theorem. So, uh, at the end, it was proper. So, how do you pass from the affine case to proper? Ah, okay. So I don't know what, what uh, I'm not completely sure I understand your question. So my Even question in is that you, you define the correspondence in the small case, the affine case, and then you not only that I extend it in the general case, but I assume in the general case that there is uh, a lifting over A2. So it's, I said it's a strong condition. I okay. you assume. Yes, definitely. I assume it's like the linear easy, you know. So I need to assume that there is a lifting. Okay. So uh, I assume I have a lifting, and I construct a correspondence. I will discuss in the last part, in the third lecture, a local ver uh, a relative version over S, where we work over a period ring which is defined naturally over S. So then there is automatically a deformation, but it has some inconvenient. It will be good for hot state, but not good beyond. So the theory works only when there is a lifting. Does it answer your question? So in this situation, we also no, here for Falting's main comparison theorem, there is absolutely no need. If we work with the ring B bar, there is nothing. It's, this statement is just about B bar. So there is no need for liftings. Okay? So the, this statement is, 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 uh, is much more general. But as soon as we reach uh, periodic Simpson correspondence, it works only when we have lifting. Okay? Yes, it depends on liftings. So, in some sense, uh, for instance, in the affine case, they will be isomorphic, but uh, it depends on the isomorphic. You, you, it's not uniquely isomorphic, okay? So, there is a very nice uh, statement about how it depends on the deformations, and we will see this uh, in uh, Dashin lecture. So, there is a kind of twisted uh, pullback to get rid of uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, the, uh, lifting of the morphisms, in some sense. We need first to lift the variety, but also we have then to lift the morphisms, and we can we can play with that. Okay, any other questions? I think Gabor raised his hand. No. Okay. So any? then, uh, any questions or comments from Zoom? So maybe Offer raised his hand. No, I don't know if he's. Ah, yes, okay. he raised his hand. Hmm? So you give him the, you can, oh. yes. Yeah, so no, it, I answered, I, I realized that I understand the, the answer to my question probably, so I did not. But uh, the point is that you had uh, in your uh, theorem about uh, that the direct image is, is uh, splits, the theorem that the direct image of this B bar average splits up to isogeny as a direct sum of differentials. Yeah. So this looks like much stronger than what the situation is the whole state spectral sequence because in in the classical situation you get the splitting globally on cohomology using tight uh, um, vanishing but here you have a kind of on the, on the shift, local shift level, you have a decomposition, but I understand that this depends on the choice of lifting 
to A2. Uh, probably mm -hmm. this, this this is already yes a, yes yes a, a yes thing. yes so 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 this explains why why yes it, so I, I, it is not a, so in particular it is it is something which when you work with varieties over k also when you work with varieties over k you say that you have a a, a, a lifting defined over if something is already starts over ok for a fixed ok then uh, uh, you said that there is a canonical, there is a way to deform using the fact that there is, a, but this is, seems to be only rational and not in the You know that K lifts to. Yes. Integral, but it is not integral. You need the integral uh, deformation. So this means that you have a way to do it with some kind of known. So the notion of deformation that you need with. So I, I think I will discuss uh, uh, tomorrow the version, the relative version. And uh, we will come back to this maybe uh, tomorrow, but let me just explain a little bit uh, to, uh, the, uh, to the people here. Uh, so what offer observed, so uh, this is was a comment on uh, Takeshi's question. So uh, we, he said that the statement was, looks like strongly, slightly uh, stronger than the hot state decomposition. And in fact, yes, uh, 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 as offer observed, but to, I did use that statement. I did use the corollary on the spectral sequence from the situation where I have a lifting over A2. Okay? Then it's normal that I get up a slightly stronger statement, which is a decomposition of this causal complex. Okay? And uh, so be beca because I assume that I have a deformation. Okay? So it leads to the hot state spectral sequence, definitely, but it's slightly, slightly stronger. And uh, we are discussing now what about uh, liftings? Could we get rid of the liftings? But we will discuss the liftings uh, at the end of next lecture. Is it okay, Ofer? So my question is whether the, in the case where the variety is defined over OK, the deformation, how we construct the deformation? Because it seems that the map of OK to, to this uh, uh, period analog with the plus modulo kernel theta square. So the other I, 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 I will I, I will explain it. I don't know if it lifts integrally. No, no, it's it's the perspective is slightly different. So I will explain it next time. We will answer everything over OK, like Fontaine did. Okay? We take vid vectors okay. and extend to OK. But we will lose at some point something. So I will discuss this at the end of next lecture. So we postpone the discussion to the next lecture. Is it okay? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so any other question uh, from Zoom? Uh... Okay, so then uh, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>